Hey everyone, my name is Lucas from Insert Frame, and today we're going to be building a multi step contact form using Framer Forms in Framer, right? And this is specifically for people, you know, building sites for B2B companies, and they want to build something more than just a basic contact form where you have, you know, a name, a phone number, an email, a message, and then a submit button, right? You want to actually have more options to tailor this contact form for your potential user or client, right? And in order to qualify these leads and start real conversations. So if this is something interesting for you guys, let's go ahead and get started. So right in front of me, I have this very basic contact form from a B2B healthcare company, right? And right now you can see that you can get in touch or schedule a visit, right? So name, phone number, email address, select date and message, right? So it's very basic. You only have these five different fields and then you can click on submit and then boom, it's done. But what if we can add, you know, two extra steps to this and kind of change the, the steps a little bit. So we have three steps in total and we can have, for example, in the first step, understand what, what the user wants, right? What type of service they want to, they want to schedule. Second, we can understand what type of company they have, right? How many people are in this company, you know, what's the company name um, and so on and so forth. And then third, more of a personal information, right, about them, what's their email, you know, what's their phone number, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started. So instead of having this one general contact form, let's add these different steps. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to go to our plugins and search for Framer Forms. So we can just type in Framer Forms, find it, then we, we log in, right? I'm already logged in. And then what's cool about Framer Forms is that you can, like, manually build the whole process inside of this existing form. But what we can do is we can click here on new form and then click here on multi-step form. And basically it generates the multi-step form for us. Now, once it gets generated, we can just grab it and bring it over here to the left, right? And then we can get this one, our old one, and just move it out of of the viewport, right? Let's just put it here on the left. And let's just put this one inside of here. We can go ahead and style this multi-step form by just clicking on it and making sure that the width is set to fill so that it fills this entire box, right? And you can already see that we have page one, page two, and page three. So we can go to our layers panel and let's just remove this for a little bit. Let's just go to our layers panel and we can see, okay, we have this multi-step form with this component, right? That is kind of, you know, invisible here, but this is our main, you know, it's like the heart of the multi-step form, right? Then we have the pages, which is one stack that contains several pages. So in this case, we have three, but if you wanted to, for example, create five pages, you could do that as well. In this case, we have three. And then underneath, we have this stack with the form page label and this stack with the previous and next buttons, right? And the submit button is basically um, in page three. And now before we start building our form, I did, you know, kind of draw like a sketch over here where we have step one, step two, step three, where step one, the user can choose their, their desired service, right? A, B, C, or D. And they can select a dropdown of what they are currently using. Then we have the company information, right? What what the name of the company is, what their website is, uh, their country, and the company size, right? So all of these are going to be with different types of input uh, fields, right? And then the last step would be the contact information, where we have the name, job title, email, phone, and additional comments, right? So this would be like the entire structure of our multi-step form. And I'd like to kind of draw this out before I actually go on and build it. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just get started building this. So I'm going to open the plugin again, Framer Forms, and I'm going to go to the inputs and I'm just going to make sure to select this right here. And we have our pages. And what's very important is that we may, we make sure that all of these inputs get, you know, inserted to the right page, right? So in this case, we're going to need something like this, where we can select different things. So in this case, we can go ahead and see, all right, we have, 
you know, we can select images, but in this case, I don't want to do that. I want to do something more like buttons, right? So let's go ahead and drag this in. So I'm going to drag this in here and we can see that it's inside of page one. That's perfect. So let's actually put this right underneath the title and let's delete these two inputs, right? So we have this and we have three options, three items, but we can make it four by just, you know, adding one. And we can, for example, this would be option three, right? Let's just make this option four, right? So this would be option four as a value and option space four as the title. And you can click on this and you can set the columns to be two, like we have it here in our example, right? And we can make sure that this doesn't have a fixed width. We can set this to fill. And then boom, it's looking more like what we want it to look like. Now, underneath these selectors, we need a drop down. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure to paste this in here as well. So I'm just going to paste it in somewhere. And you can see that it is actually right below page one. And that's not good. We want it. So that's why I'm always telling you to be careful where you insert these, these different inputs. Just make sure that it is inside of this page one page and underneath this section, right? So let's just set this to fill, right? And then we can go ahead and start styling this. So we want this to be services or let's just call this like, um, what what solution would, would you need from us, right? And again, I mean, you can just write whatever title you want, right? And then we can go here and say, what solution are you currently using? Right. And then if you want to basically just select or, or if you want to um, add the different options, you can go here, you can just click on this drop down and over here, you can go over here. This is option A title, right? You, you would just have to rename these things right to the to the uh, actual names that you want to add. So in this case, instead of option A, we can use something like um, solution. Solution one, this would be solution one, right? This would be solution two, solution two, and so on and so forth. All right, and now for page two, company information. So we can actually just call this company information. Let's make sure to call this one what was it? Uh, um, contact us. Let's just start off like that. Contact us, company information. This would be more personal information. And then here we have different types of fields that we need to add. So we have the company name, website, and country. So let's just go ahead and look for that. So for the company name, I would say the text would be the best option. So let's just add this in here, right? Then we, we would need the website so that can be like a link so let's see if we have something like that yeah like a url put that underneath and then the next thing would be a country in this case we have a very interesting one called country so let's just try this out right over here where you can select the country right so in this case what we can do is we can make this set to fill and we can put these two together add a stack to this and put them like this, right? And let's make sure that these are all both set to fill. So the name would come first and then the URL and the country would come afterwards in the same stack. And then we can just delete this location one. And then we have the company size, right? So let's just do that one as the next one. So we can just scroll down and see, okay, I guess the best option here would be a drop down. You could also use like bullet points or something like that, but I guess a drop down would be the best one. And again, let's just make sure that it is inside of this page two, like so, and set this to fill. All right. And for the final step for this personal information, we want to add the contact name in here. We need to add the job title, which would also be a text field. We need the email, which we can just drag in like this. And we need the phone number, 
which would go under the email. And let's just make sure that everything is in the same hierarchy, right? Perfect. So I would put these two together. So let's just add a stack and make sure that the stack is horizontal and make sure that these guys are set to fill. And I would just set everything else to fill just so that everything is like in the same styling, right? So here, this would be the contact name. So I'm going to write contact name. And this would be the job title. Right? And as you can see here, it says Jane Smith and we have name. And we have here Jane Smith as well. We have to change this to, for example, CEO. And we have to make sure that these input names are different throughout, right? So we also have a name over here and we have a URL over here. So we have to make each one kind of unique to its own. So in order to do that, let's just select these different fields. Let's call this, for example, company name. And this would be, for example, the contact name, right? So we have company name, we have contact name. This would be the job title. And this is unique, this is unique. Then we have several drop downs. So this one, for example, won't be the location. So these are all like locations. So let's call this, um, for example, current, current solutions. This would be, what did we have over here? We had company size. Okay, so this would be company size. And yeah, we have these two drop downs. We have this one as well, which is country. That's great. So we can leave it like that. This is one's email, phone number, drop down, URL, country, drop down. Okay, so I think now everything is kind of unique. And the next step would basically be to, you know, fix the copy and fix the styling. So in this case, we had our own form. We really like the, 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 the coloring of this so we can just go ahead and click this and kind of analyze to see it's this dark color so we can go ahead and choose this dark color for this submit button right and just style that to look like that right and we can set for example the fonts to be the fonts of the project if we have any for example And once you finish with the copy and the design, you can go ahead and publish your website or, or test it out in Framer. And you can see, okay, contact us. What solution would you need from us? I would need option one and option four, and I'm currently using solution number two. Okay, click next. Company name, we can just write, you know, um, Framer. Company website would be framer.com. Country, we can choose a random one. And company size, say we're 10 to 30 people, click on next, contact name, let's write my name. I am the CEO of this company. So let's just type CEO, I can write my email. And then my phone number, just type in something random, right? And then I can click on submit, but this is, you know, I chose to make this mandatory. So we have to take this, click on submit, and then it should work, right? And again, since this is a framer form, you can just select on the form. So going up here to the layers and selecting on this form, and you can choose if you want to send it directly to your email as a webhook or to a specific Google Sheets file. So yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little tutorial that I made today. Um, we have a finished multi-step contact form with three different steps, right? And yeah, all made with Framer forms inside of Framer. You saw how easy it was and you saw, you know, how powerful this tool really is when creating advanced forms. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the uh, comments below and um, make sure to visit Framer forms in the description below. All right. So hopefully, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.